Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Murali. Hey, Murali. Hey, Robert. Welcome back. Thank you. Last time Murali was here was to talk about the productivity power tools for Visual Studio 2012. Yep. And today you're here to talk about the productivity power tools for Visual Studio 2013. Yep. Which released at the exact same time as Visual Studio 2013 last week. Yeah, so what we did was uh, we got a lot of customer feedback from people asking for power tools uh, in 2012. Mm -hmm. But we took a little bit of time to release them last Those year. Those were like a couple months after the product Yeah, it was ship. about two months after right? the product ship. Okay. So this time we wanted to push the bar further and we wanted mm -hmm. to give it on the day we has released. So, so the 2010 power tools shipped how long after 2010? Uh, a couple of months after. A couple of months. And then the 2012 was tools two months. again, two months. 2013 sim yes. ship. Sim ship. So next time around, they'll, they'll ship them like a week early, right? Yeah, maybe a week early. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, people have been asking us for power tools uh, since the preview for VS 2013 mm -hmm. went out. And the team has been hard at work uh, trying to port over. And uh, new to this release, we, we not only just ported over the extensions, we have new extensions as well. So cool. we have 11 new features in power tools this release. So the 2010 power tools, which total downloads are like 1.6 million, um, which is just a huge number, although there were multiple releases, right? Yep. So, yep. But still, wildly popular. A lot of those features made it into 2012. The 2012 power tools, uh, last count, almost 300,000 downloads, still yep. a gigantic number. Some of those features made it into the product, is that right? Yep, so okay. what we generally do is we go to user voice and other feedback forums to see which extensions are really popular. Okay. And the popular extensions, we try to bring it into the product yeah. in the next release, okay. uh, purely based on customer feedback. Right, and so at this point, people, uh, you're telling me, basically uh, treat the power tools as part of the product. It, does, it doesn't ship in the box, not yep. that we have boxes anymore, but it doesn't ship in the box, but it's available on the Visual Studio Gallery. It's, yeah, it's available on the gallery, and people, uh, I keep hearing feedback uh, from people saying, I can't use Visual Studio without Power Tools. So it's awesome. become part and parcel of their daily development process, which, is, which is really great to see. Okay, um, so show us what's new in 2013. Yeah, so uh, new to 2013 release, uh, we have around 11 new features. Some of them are part of already existing extensions, and some of them are brand new extensions to this release. Okay. So uh, on the gallery page, we have all these extensions listed out, yep. and detailed description of you know what each extension does. Uh, what I'll do today in this uh, in for this video is I'll just go over the new stuff that we okay. have in Power Tools. Great. Uh, so let me switch back to Visual Studio. So the first uh, feature I would like to show is called the Peak Help feature. So in Visual Studio 2013, we released an, uh, a feature called Peak Definition, right. which brings in the definition of any symbol inline inside the editor. Mm -hmm. So we, we wanted to take that paradigm further, and so what we have done is added a feature called Peak Help, uh, which essentially brings in the MSDN content and shows it right below the uh, invocation inline nice. inside the editor. So here you can see for string, I can see the MSDN content, and this is a real browser. So I can, if I, I can navigate inside this and you know look at other hyperlinks and also go back and forth using the using the context menu here. Uh, so it's really a browser cool. control hosted inside Peak. Now that that uses the online content. It's smart enough to use the offline content if you're offline and you have downloaded the offline content. Is that uh, right? It's it's only online only for now. Only online. It, okay. Yeah, it's the F1 help content that it just shows. Okay. Inside. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, that's the Peak Help extension. Uh, That's awesome. Another good example of, of not switching context. The whole point, uh, one of the great things about peak definition was that you could see what's in a method that you're calling without having to switch context and leave where you are. Now you can get help on things the same way. Yep, That's absolutely. Cool. So That's cool. this is sort of the direction we want to go is uh, we introduced this paradigm called peak mm -hmm. and we want to bring more and more stuff yeah. into the peak paradigm and this is just an example of that. Uh, and dismissing it is very easy, just you know, escape and it goes away and you're back into the editor. Cool. Uh, so the next feature I want to show is something we have done in the Solution Explorer. Uh, so if you make some errors in your files, let, let me just go and make some errors. I, I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you look at the Solution Explorer, cool. you have squiggles on the nodes. Uh, so <laughs> we sort of wanted <laughs> to bring cool. more information uh -huh. uh, at your fingertips. And 
what this does is without even looking at my files, I exactly know where the errors that are. That is hugely helpful. You build your project, you've got a bunch of errors. Today you go to the error list and then you one at a time go to the files. Yep. Here you get sort Here of you an get overview. An overview of where the errors are. Nice. And quickly by looking at the mm -hmm. Solution Explorer, I know which project the error is in. Okay. So I can and, uh, quickly you know, narrow down onto the file that actually has the error. Mm -hmm. And but then it shows you. Yeah, if you hover on it, it actually oh, shows oh. you a preview of all the errors in that file. This is awesome. And this is ex the same content as the error list. We, so could, we can could stop right now and people would go download this. Yeah, this, this is a really popular. Uh, but wait, there's more. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's a lot more. So uh, this is like the error list. So I can you know, filter down, like click on mm -hmm. this to filter warnings, and filter out errors. Double click or click on one of those, you go to that line? I double click awesome. on it, it takes me right to that line. Nice. And uh, so the Solution Explorer is really like a hub now. So if I go and filter the Solution Explorer to just the error, error filter, cool. it filters it down Very to just nice. the files that have yeah. errors and warnings and messages. Look at that. And That's I, awesome. can, I can click on this and just filter it down to only the errors or I can add warnings. Now, if you expand uh, the classes, it show you the methods and whether or not they have? Uh, it doesn't show you squiggles on the methods. Okay. That's something that we want to do in the okay. future. But right now, it just shows you the, the file that right. has the error. Okay. But what's cool about this is uh, I can, I can right-click and say, uh, create a new uh, Solution Explorer view. And now I have sort of my, if I filter this uh, this down, this is my error list, right. and this is my regular Solution yep. Explorer. So if I have multiple monitors, I can have yep. one view just for the filtered errors, exactly. and the other view for just my Solution Explorer. Cool. Uh, so that's another uh, cool extension that we have uh, we have introduced uh, in this release. The third extension I want to show you is, is called a Structure Visualizer. So typically what happens is if you are, uh, let's say if you are in, in this scenario where stuff has been scrolled out of view. One, one last question on that. Is, is, can you turn that feature on and off? Oh, absolutely. So any feature we have introduced, we have a tools options for it. Okay. So if you go to tools, uh, options, and productivity power tools, this sort there of has a list excellent. of all extensions you okay. can turn on and off. Because I could see where if you're just in the process of coding, that might get distracting. It's like, yep. you have errors. Well, I know I have errors. I'm not done yet. Yep. But then yep. when That's you get to the point, point yeah. where you're done, then you turn it on. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Uh, also, you can customize what you want to see. So if you if you click on the solution error visualizer, mm -hmm. you can uh, oh, cool. turn okay. on and off individual yep. errors, warnings, or messages, yeah. and also the pop-up. You can control if it shows up or not. Mm -hmm. um, so there are, there are some ex uh, customization points here. So uh, coming back to s the structure visualizer uh, extension, so here I'm I'm probably in in some method, but it's been scrolled out of view. So I don't know which method I am in right now, right. or which class I am in right now. So if you notice, there are these lines that show up in yeah. the editor, mm -hmm. and if I hover on the line, you can actually see a preview yeah. of the starting block. Nice. So here, when I've the starting of the block scrolled out of view, I can actually get a preview of what that block is. So mm -hmm. here it. It tells me that I'm in static void print, and I'm in the print method. I can hover on this, and it tells me I'm inside uh, the class program. And this is for the namespace. Right. And this even works for uh, if statements, and that's where it gets really interesting. So if I have, like, let's say, I'm just going to make a simple if statement here. And I have some code. Mm -hmm. I get a line here which actually tells me, you know, it, it sort of tells me the structure of my code. So if I have, like, a huge of statements called view, I can hover on this and it actually tells me okay. exactly where this thing is. Um, we also have an extension of this in the enhanced scroll bar. So if I if I uh, switch to the map mode of the scroll bar, and this is how you turn on the map mode, yep. it sort of gives me an overview yeah. of how my code is structured. Uh -huh. So here I know that there is a there is some block that is kind of wide. There's you know a couple of blocks up and down here, and hovering on them will tell me exactly which block that is. So here somewhere I have the if statement. Sweet. This is my print method. Mm -hmm. This is my main method. And there's another method here. So quickly I can sort of see how my code is structured right. without having to do a lot of scrolling in the file. Very cool. So this is called the structure margin, and again this is fully customizable in in tools options as well. Mm -hmm. um, the third extension I want to show you is uh, is called the double click to maximize windows. It's a very simple extension that um, that someone created on the team, and it became hugely popular internally. And we wanted to ship it as part of Power Tools. 
So let's say I'm, uh, let me fix these errors real quick. I just want to start debugging. And enhanced crawl bar allows me to quickly go to my errors as well, which is nice. If I start debugging my, my app here, now I have a bunch of values in the local stool window. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what happens is there's too many values here and you need to scroll. So what we have done is a quick way to double click on the tool window to maximize it to full ah, screen. So, okay. so you can quickly get your information in a full screen view. Mm -hmm. You can double click again and it goes back into its original is state. Okay, and uh, is that for every window or just some windows? Uh, this works for every window. So every window inside board, uh, or a programs. file tab. I, I click on, double click on it, becomes full view. Double click on it again. That goes back is to very it cool is. for those of us who present, who are constantly trying to remember. I think by now it's it's Alt Shift Enter to go to full yeah. screen. Yes. By now I yes. finally got it memorized. <laughs> years later. Um, this is, you've got the mouse and you're scrolling around, you double click, that's a great yep. feature for yep. presenters. And especially when you when you debug, you have a lot of values. Mm -hmm. It's very useful to quickly you know, maximize it, see the value, right. max, uh, minimize it again, it docks back into its original place. It does mean I'm going to forget the shortcut. I'll shift enter a year from now, I won't remember that. Because yep. I'll just yep. start double clicking. This is a nice <laughs> way of doing it as well, yeah. Um, so that's another feature that we have introduced newly to, to this release. Mm -hmm. um, so coming back to your scenario of uh, presenting, right? So we had a quick task extension in the previous release of uh, Power Tools, where you can go into the quick launch search box, type present on, and that would you know, bump up your environment mm -hmm. font and the editor font, optimizing it for presentation. So one of the requests we have gotten from uh, customers is they want to be able to customize what font size and font family this extension uses. Ah, so okay. uh, how do you customize uh, what actually this uh, this extension does? So let me turn it off here. So this release, we have introduced a new task called present edit. So you type present edit, and this opens up a simple XML file mm -hmm. that allows you to customize nice. exactly which font uh, family you want to use, which font size you want to use. Um, and this is a very simple file, very easy way of customizing. Just go and type whatever fa font family size mm -hmm. you want and save it and you're done. Is it customizable to the extent that you can have multiple present edit settings uh, saved? No, it's just one okay. present edit. Okay. But uh, typically what happens is people tend to prefer one right. font size, one font family. Yeah. And this is an easy way to customize that. Yeah. But what you could do is you could make multiple copies of that and, and, and just comment out yep. the ones you're not using. So yep. you've got how I present internally, how I present at this particular show, how Absolutely. I present at that Absolutely. particular show, how I present when I'm on toolbox, et cetera. Yep, yep. Cool. Uh, and uh, it's very okay. safe to make errors here. Like if you make an error and you know you, you can you can close this file, the next time we open, we restore it back to its right. original place. So it's a very simple way of customizing present on mm -hmm. uh, uh, extension. And then they probably don't sync yet, but is that something that would sync? Uh, potentially in the we future, add that to yes. The list of, to the yep. very yep. long and growing list of things that people yep. are going to want yep. to sync. Roaming has been a really yes. popular feature this yeah. release, and we are absolutely thinking of adding more stuff to roaming. Yep. Uh, uh, at the well. launch, I had uh, Kathy and Kathy Solomon and David Starr on. We did the the IDE um, interview, and almost all of the questions were about whether or not certain things roamed to the point where at the very end somebody asked, does this roam? And I said, I'll answer that. No, but it could. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. again, get uh, go to user voice and tell us the things that you really want yes, to roam. Yes, we monitor user voice. Yep. Uh, send us feedback through uh, send us mile as well and okay. we monitor all of that. Cool. Um, so the next extension I want to uh, show you is um, control click to peek. So one of the things that was popular in, in earlier versions of Power Tools is the ability to control click on a symbol mm -hmm. to go to definition. Right. So what we have done this release is uh, we have actually changed that extension to show you a peak when you control click on a symbol. So what this allows you to do is quickly look at the definition without losing your context from your current file. And instead of going to that definition, it actually opens up a peak and shows you the definition in line. Uh, so how's right it different than code peak? 
Uh, code peak, you can invoke it by right click and and you know peak definition. Okay, alt F12. Control so click is, is a new control, mechanism. Just an easier way. Yep. You can alt twelve or control click, but it's the same functionality. It's the same functionality. Got it. Okay. It's just making it simpler for people, yeah. uh, you know, to control click yep. and view definition uh, in line. Mm -hmm. So this is a really popular uh, feature as well. Um, uh, for go to definition, yes, and we wanted to you know surface peak using this gesture, and again does for that work in uh, like XAML files or just in code? Uh, it does not in the Def 12 version in the Visual Studio 2013, right. but uh, uh, it might in the future. Okay. We are we are thinking about okay. it, uh, and again for uh, anyone who's used to go to definition and still wants the same behavior, this is customizable. So you go to tools, um, tools options. Power Tools, other extensions, and here there's an option that says ah, Control okay. Click Options, mm -hmm. Control Click Shows Peak. So if you turn this option off, then you are back to your go to definition behavior for Control Click. So if I turn this option off and then do Control Click, it simply navigates to that definition versus actually showing me okay. inside a peak view. I see. So um, mm -hmm. that's another new feature we've added in, in this release. Right. Uh, the next one I want to show you is uh, called HTML copy. HTML copy is a very popular extension that allows you to copy your code as HTML. So for people who want to blog often mm -hmm. and they have code to paste into the VCBIG editor, mm -hmm. they can simply copy paste and they don't have to do any other customization. So in this release, we have added, uh, uh, as part of the HTML copy, the ability to copy text as raw HTML. So you can go to edit and say um, copy HTML markup. And then if I open uh, Notepad and paste it, it actually pastes the yeah, corresponding the HTML. Colors and the style, excellent. Exactly. So and, it and the font? And the font as well. So it, it, awesome. it just saves the, the HTML version yeah. of, of, uh, okay. of the text you copy. That's cool. So this is very helpful if you have a HTML editor that's not WYSIWYG and you want to paste in uh, manually HTML right. content on it. So that's a popular extension. Uh, we've also added some cool options to uh, HTML copy. So if you go to Power Tools HTML copy, we have an option that says uh, unindent to remove extra leading white space. So if you want all your content to be aligned, mm -hmm. it actually removes all the white space to make it aligned for you. It has uh, replace tabs with spaces as another option we have introduced newly to this uh, to this release. Okay. Um, so the ninth feature I want to show you is called uh, uh, Open Recently Closed Documents. So if I go and close a bunch of documents, and now I want to open these documents mm -hmm. that I just closed, you can go to the File menu, and you have an option saying Recently Closed Documents, which has a list of all the documents that you closed mm -hmm. recently. So I can go and click on any of them, and it cool. opens that document for me. So uh, we have ac this existed in previous versions of Power Tools, but it was a separate tool window. Mm -hmm. We have moved it into the file menu to make it easier for you right. to open and access it. Very nice. Um, the tenth feature we've added is uh, called the Match Margin. So what that extension does is it simply highlights all occurrences of this string inside the editor. Mm -hmm. So I have this uh, text string. It finds all the textual matches of this and highlights them in, in a certain color. And also on the scroll bar, so you have these purple uh, purple uh, dots on the scroll okay. bar corresponding to uh, the occurrences of this string. Cool. And this is useful if you have a really long file and you just want to yep. do a simple text match and no additional uh, uh, you know intelligence there. Mm -hmm. So this is another popular extension. Um, and finally, the eleventh feature uh, that I want to show you is we've done some context menu cleanup for Power Commands. So Power Commands added a lot of uh, a lot of options in the Solution Explorer context menu. What we have done this really is consolidated all of those into its own uh, category. So here I have Power Commands. It's all neatly organized now, so it doesn't clutter your context menu. S so does that assume you have the Power Commands installed, or does that take? Yes. Okay, and and the power there are Power Commands for 2013. Uh, there are no new Power Commands okay. for 2013. These are existing Power Commands which have been moved into a more uh, uh, clutter-free type so location. So if I only have 2013 on my computer, I install the productivity power tools, I then get these power commands? Yes. Got it. Power okay. commands are part of productivity power okay, tools. Good. We have just moved them to a more accessible right. place uh, inside its own context menu. Mm -hmm. 
so it doesn't clutter up your your uh, context menu in the solution yep. explorer. So uh, that was like a quick uh, rundown of 11 features that we have added newly to this mm -hmm. release of, of Power Tools. Uh, in addition to this, all the features that people are already used to and they love still exist in Power Tools. Okay. On the gallery page, uh, we have created a detailed description of what exactly each one does. Uh, and these are all the same extensions that already so exist. So how many total extensions are there in, in 2013, uh, do you know? Around 20, uh, 20, 20 to something. 20. 20 something, and if okay. you include power commands, it adds another 10. So okay. around 30 in all. Cool. So, yep. Um, so we, we said earlier, and I'm going to put you on the spot here, there were about 10 updates to the original productivity power tools. Uh, were there, how many updates were there to the 2012 ones? Uh, there were about two updates two. to 2012. Okay. So there may be updates to the 2013 ones. Uh, yes. Uh, we generally release an update when? if there when is. the first one? Uh, <laughs> I can't tell you right okay. now, but um, uh, what we do generally is we monitor feedback, and mm -hmm. if there's any bug that right. many people report, we fix them in an update. Or if there's any new feature that we want to surface as part of Power Tools, we uh, mm -hmm. uh, release an update as well. Uh, on that note, I also want to mention about the Dev Labs gallery. Okay. So what we have done in the Visual Studio uh, gallery website is now we have a Dev Labs category where we ship extensions that are purely experimental. Right. So these are extensions that we don't guarantee a good quality bar. They need not be stable. But these are some things that we want people to try out and give us feedback. So this is pri purely for experimentation. Mm -hmm. You want to have a two-way conversation with, with customers. And we started releasing one or two extensions in the DevLabs gallery uh, over the past uh, one year. And we are going to continue to do that. So any extension that we think is, is not yet ready for Power Tools, not yet ready for the product, but we still want feedback on, we use the DevLabs gallery okay. to, to ship them. Mm -hmm. So that's another means of feedback where people can try out extension and you know give us right. feedback on it. All right, awesome. Yep. These are so cool. Yep. Um, uh, I hope people like these extensions. Uh, we are really excited about these features and you know send us feedback. Yeah. So this is so go get these. Must have tool. They're in the in the gallery. Uh, Visual Studio Gallery you can also look for them under tools, extensions, and updates. Yep. Um, so if you update them, then the update would appear in the notification area, right? Yes. So you'll be yes, told inside the product that there's yep. a new version. Uh, right uh, here. So free tools, great stuff in here. Really does a nice job of complementing what ships in the product. Excellent stuff. Yep. Thanks for coming on. Yep. Thank you, Albert. All right. See you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.